On this problem, we're given a demand function, and our goal is we are going to figure out the elasticity of demand function. We're going to evaluate that at a given price point, in this case $64. Then based on that, we're going to determine whether this is inelastic, elastic, or unitary. And based on that, we're going to figure out should we raise prices, keep prices unchanged, or lower our prices if the end goal is to uh, increase our revenue. Alright, so to get started here, you'll notice our demand function is a function of P, meaning P is our variable being plugged in. Demand functions always connect together, price and quantity. So in this case, D of P is the same thing as our Q. Alright, Q for quantity. Um, I'm going to go ahead and rewrite this. I've given you the elasticity of demand function going on here. P is going to get plugged into the numerator. Q, our 300 over P, gets plugged into the denominator, but you'll notice in both these versions, either DQ over DP, that's the derivative of Q with respect to P, or Q prime, just different notation that means the same thing, we're going to need the derivative of our demand function. So before we find that derivative, I'm going to go ahead and rewrite our demand function. Instead of having P to the first power in the denominator, I'm going to move that up to the numerator and make that P to the negative first power. That way, as we're trying to find the derivative here, either Q prime or, if you want to think, DQ DP, we can just use the power rule. So that power rule is going to allow us to bring along the 300. We'll bring the exponent down in front, so negative 1 comes down becomes a multiple. Then we'll reduce the exponent by 1. So our old exponent, negative 1, we're going to subtract 1 away from that. Negative 1 minus 1 makes negative 2 for our new exponent. Now a little bit of cleaning this up. I'm going to think 300 times negative 1 is negative 300. But in a similar thought process, to get rid of a negative exponent, I can move that back down to the denominator. So I can say it's p to the positive second power in our denominator. And that's our derivative. So to create this elasticity of demand function, I'm going to go ahead and say, well, remember it's an absolute value. P is going to be the first component up in our numerator. And then Q, we're going to copy down the 300 over P in our denominator here. Then that gets multiplied by what we just calculated for that derivative. So it's going to be negative 300 over P squared. Still inside of our absolute value function. All right, so from here, it's a little bit of simplifying down, but it shouldn't be too bad, I don't think. The first thing that I'm going to go ahead and do is think to myself, I'm going to multiply our numerators together. So P times negative 300 makes negative 300P for our numerator. But then as I think about multiplying our denominators together, because of this fraction, I can think, well, I'm multiplying P squared and then that's going to be in the numerator of like that little fraction. One of these gets to cancel out with this P from this denominator. So really we have 300 multiplied by P in our denominator. We get 300 P in that denominator. Well, what other reducing down can we do? Well, we could definitely say negative 300 over 300, right? The 300s cancel out, we're left with a negative 1, and P over P, those cancel out, so we're really left with the absolute value of negative 1, which when we simplify that absolute value down, we get positive 1. So that's our function, that's the elasticity of demand function for this particular demand function. Next let's use that to figure out the elasticity of demand at a price point of 64. So what that means is we plug in a 64 into that function we just created wherever we have a P. Well, in our case, we don't have P. It's just one. It's a constant function. All right, so what does it mean when it's just one? Well, that tells us that is a unitary elasticity of demand. All right, it's equal to one unit, equal to one. Now, if it were um, above one, then it would be elastic. If it were below 1, that would be inelastic. All right, and then based on that, we're at a perfect price point to maximize our revenue. We're going to keep our prices unchanged. Now, we would lower prices if it was elastic, so lower prices if it was greater than 1. We would raise prices if it was inelastic, if it was less than 1. 
like a, a 0.7 or, or some number less than one. This was a little bit different because it equaled a, a number. We didn't have any P's left over in our elasticity of demand function. Um, so I hope this helps out as you're working through trying to understand elasticity of demand. Good luck.